lecturer in international uh, relations at Paris's uh, Catholic uh, Institute, Sophie Enos Attali. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. Your specialization is uh, Finnish and Swedish security policies. Uh, le le did you think 13 months ago we'd be talking about Finland in NATO? Not at all. Not at all, because uh, I thought that uh, this uh, would be considered as um, too, uh, too dangerous, actually. Too dangerous both for uh, Finland and even for NATO to have Finland in it. Because we have to remember that Finland, both with Sweden, uh, represented a buffer zone between NATO and Russia. And this was considered as a source of security both for NATO, both for Finland and Sweden, and even for Russia. Having this buffer zone between Russia and NATO was considered as a source of security. And, and of course, the, the, the invasion of Ukraine, the full-scale invasion of Ukraine changed all that. Now, we think of Finland as a neutral nation. Of course, it's not starting from scratch when it comes to its military. Sure. We, we think of Finland as a neutral country, but in fact, Finland decided to become neutral because of its border, its long history and difficult history with Russia, because of its long border with Russia. And in fact, Finland was really neutral until the end of the Cold War. And then it didn't uh, consider itself as neutral anymore, but only as non-allied. So, in fact, uh, Finland has had little by little changed its, its own security policy um, since the end of the Cold War. When Dmitry Peskov uh, warns of countermeasures, is that just shrugged off as a bluff? It's, it's probably a bluff, but I, uh, I think that Finland may consider uh, some, everything is possible, not on the military point of view, but maybe... Cyber attacks, for example, cyber attacks would be possible. I don't know. Uh, particularly pleased must be Norway. Uh, after all, uh, it's a country that uh, ha has had to directly confront Russia uh, alone in the Arctic. So, yes. So uh, having uh, Finland into NATO will uh, improve NATO's capability in Northern Europe and especially in the Baltic Sea, in the Baltic area. So this, uh, this is a good, new, good news both for Norway, but also for our Baltic states, especially Estonia. Now, we all, we've given plenty of coverage to uh, Turkey's objections to Sweden mm -hmm. uh, uh, joining. Those haven't been lifted ahead of uh, 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 elections that are taking place in May. Um, but why Hungary? Why is Hungary also holding out on Sweden's membership? So now uh, Sweden holds as the presidency of the European Union. And, uh, and you know that uh, for Sweden, uh, the rule of law is something very important. So since Sweden has the presidency of the European Union, many Swedish officials criticize Hungar the Hungarian government uh, for uh, the low level of democracy in Hungary. And so it's like, uh, I would say, like a blackmail uh, from Hungary, trying, uh, saying, OK, I can't uh, accept NATO, uh, Sweden's entrance into NATO since it uh, doesn't, uh, it, it, um, it always criticizes our government. The day that Turkey lifts its objections, does Hungary lift its objections too? Is it a given? It's not given, but it should help, yeah. Sure. It should help. Yeah. We were talking about how these are unprecedented times, this return of NATO, if you will, and really the return of uh, militarization. We didn't think there would be an artillery war in Europe in this day and age. Finland entering uh, the alliance the same day that France unveiled a plan for its biggest defense budget increases since the 1960s, three to four billion euros more every year until the year 2030. I I think that from now on, the French elites, including politicians, will also be divided into two camps. Those who consider that the threats are real, concrete and lasting, and those who, deep down, don't believe it. And I'm very struck by this, because even within certain political groups, there are people who have a very different approach. They say, well, basically, we have the nuclear deterrent, we don't care. Why put more money into that? 
But when I say, are we defended on the cyber of tomorrow, the answer is no. Are we fully defended in space? No. Is our solar defense sufficient? Halfway. Sofia Nozatari, again, we're, we're expressing the surprise of the fact that we're in a situation now where Finland joins NATO. When you look at the French defense uh, budget over the next seven years that they've unveiled this Tuesday, 413 billion euros. And uh, yeah, a lot of the money for things like you heard the minister say, cyber, but also basic things like uh, bullets, artillery shells. Yes, because uh, with uh, the beginning, since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, we rediscovered that uh, um, a simple, mili simple, simple military war was possible in Europe. We thought this wouldn't be possible anymore after the Second World War, but we just discovered that this could happen and we are not ready for that. And uh, also, um, we, we can't only rely, rely only on the United States to, to come to our aid. We need to be able to defend ourselves by our, on our own. So it's necessary for every European country to increase its uh, military uh, effort, its defense budget. What does public opinion think of that? Uh, I, I think public opinion is ready to hear that since uh, everyone uh, has become um, uh, has become aware of a new a war in Europe can happen not only on the eastern flank not only in Ukraine but maybe uh, also on the on the western parts of the continent. Because we heard some of the demonstrators in those pension reform protests saying, well, uh, if, why is it that there's money for defense but not money for uh, retirement? Yes, of course, when, uh, I mean, uh, where, when you are anxious about what you're going to eat tomorrow or how will be your end of the month, you know, regarding your bank account, of course they say, okay, why so much money uh, for our armaments? You know, I I need something to to to, to eat, but uh, I think that some people, even among the public opinion, I think that the majority of people can understand the need to be able to defend ourselves, our territory in case of an attack, not only our territory, but also our uh, equipment, cyber equipment, and so on. One final question for you. Uh, the uh, full-scale invasion of Ukraine, uh, of course, is has uh, sounded the alarm throughout the continent. The most, you might say, in bordering states like the Baltic states, like Poland. Um, it, when you look at the NATO alliance now, and you look at countries like Finland, uh, and Sweden, uh, what, what's going to be their, their long-term view on Russia? Uh, as long as uh, Putin is at the head uh, on, uh, of Russia, I think the, the relationship to Russia will remain very, very difficult. And I think that uh, um, they, they, they will just remain on the NATO side. Things may change uh, after the Putin's era. So a confrontational, uh, an adversarial, shall we say, uh, view of Moscow. Sofia yeah. Nosatari of uh, the Catholic Institute, thank you for joining us.